Hello and welcome to part two of our Trademarks introductory talk. My name is Edward Carstairs and I'm a partner at Gill Jennings and Every, which is a specialist IP law firm based in both London and Munich. I'm a qualified UK and European trademark attorney, so I primarily help our clients protect their brands. I work with businesses across a variety of different sectors, including food and drink, fashion, sportswear, consumer electronics, media and financial services. I also work with businesses from various stages, whether they be startups all the way through to large multinationals. We also have a specialist team in our chemical and life sciences and IT and engineering teams, providing both patent and design advice. This is part two of our talks where we will be looking at how to maintain ownership and control of your trademarks and brands and also we'll be having a look at the filing and registration process for trademarks. In this slide we'll be looking at ownership and control of IP, how to maintain ownership and control of your trademarks and your brands. File trademark applications, file them now and file them in the correct name, i.e. the name of your business, rather than wait for someone else to do it for you. This can be a complicated and difficult exercise to unpick and naturally lead to rather costly implications for you. Investors like to see IP standing in the name of a company rather than the name of an individual. The reason being that if the IP stands in the name of an individual, there's nothing stopping that person leaving the business and walking away with all of that value. Robust contracts with Distributors and other business partners are also recommended. Relationships will naturally start in a positive manner, but from experience, we can see that they won't always end that way. So make clear in writing at the outset who does what. Make sure any contract includes a recognition from the other side that you own the IP and that they won't file or register anything themselves. Keep records of the process of the things that you've created along the way, which will be a helpful record for these purposes. Make sure that any copyright that's created is assigned over to the business. Use contracts to tie up any questions or if there's any doubt with the ownership of that copyright. It's a very common problem we see across a number of businesses. So if you've engaged with a design company and there's no contract with you that says the IP created by that design company is assigned over to your business, then the designer will own that copyright. That's the default position in the UK. And that can be a huge spanner in the works if you ever need to rely on that copyright in the future. And indeed, it can put into question the validity of any trademark registrations that you have. So check that the copyright has been assigned over to your company. This can also include checking that the domain names are owned by your company, as well as the website content that's been created. Patents and designs are also relevant. You always need to think about who's creating this IP and who is owning it. Statements of ownership on your website will, will help. So saying that the content is owned by your business and using the R in a circle and the TM logo as well is a good way of laying claim to your IP. Ask questions now if anything is unclear. Don't bury your head in the sand and wait for the relationship to break down or the marketing person to leave or the person in control of your social media to leave the business and then find that you don't have the appropriate logins. Make sure that you've addressed that early. We'll next look at the trademark filing and registration process. As you can see, there are a number of stages attached to this and the first is the examination stage. So provided you've selected the right trademark, so a trademark that is distinctive and that is not descriptive, you should avoid any objections. An examiner will also check that the goods and services have been placed in the right class. Um, and in some countries, they will also check the register for any conflicting earlier marks and cite any of those that are considered relevant. Now, provided you're able to overcome any queries that are raised, the examiner will then place your application for publication purposes. This is usually a two to three month window during which third parties are given the opportunity to object to the registration of your trademark. Now, if you've run freedom to operate searches before filing, you'll have a pretty good idea of what issues there might be out there. And hopefully you will also have a chance to consider ways to overcome any obstacles that are thrown in your path. Assuming the trademark passes the publication stage without objection, it will then be registered and placed on the register. And it's at this point that you can use the R in a circle logo 
before registration is achieved, you should use the TM logo. Renewal is usually not due until the 10th anniversary of filing. Uh, you can renew for indefinitely, so a trademark can exist forever as long as the renewal fees are paid on time. The timeline from filing to registration in the UK, assuming things run smoothly, is usually about four to six months. And at the EU IPO for EU trademarks, it's usually around six to nine months. So that brings us to an end of part two of this introduction to trademarks. If you need any further information, you can find it at our website, www.gge.com. Or if you have any questions, you can email them to me at edward.casters at gge.com. You can also contact me at our LinkedIn page, and you can find our other presentations and talks at our YouTube page at the link at the bottom of the screen.